This is the FlipNerd.com Expert Real Estate Investing Show, the show for real estate investors, whether you're a veteran or brand new. I'm your host, Mike Hambright, and each week I bring you a new expert guest that will share their knowledge and lessons with you. If you're excited about real estate investing, believe in personal responsibility, and taking control of your life and financial destiny, you're in the right place. This is episode number 328, and my guest today is Martin Boonzeyer. Martin is a fantastic person, just a great guy with a lot of great information that he's going to share today. He's also a seven-time national champion and competed in judo in the 2000 and 2004 Olympics. You can bet that being a world-class athlete can help you learn a few things about how to compete in real estate investing. And today, Martin shares some of his lessons that can help you become a better and more successful real estate investor. There's some really powerful lessons that we're going to discuss today. So uh, get ready and listen up. Please help me welcome Martin Boonzeyer to the show. Martin, welcome to the show, my friend. Thanks, Mike. It's great to be here. Yeah, yeah. Great, great to see you. I'm excited to talk about um, everything we're going to talk about today because it's such an important thing that uh, that I I teach a lot about about you know, this is a, this is a tough business sometimes, and I think it's important to uh, to talk about you know never giving up and and some of the other things we're talking about building a brand and things like that. But before we jump into it, um, you have uh, really an incredible resume uh, background. Uh, why don't you share a little bit more with us uh, about your your background and your experience? Okay, sure. Well, um, academically, my background is actually engineering, which is kind of a little different in this space. But uh, <laughs> um, then uh, athletically, that's what most people seem to be more interested in. I had opportunity to uh, compete in uh, the Olympic Games in 2000 and 2004 in the sport of judo. And uh, so that uh, is definitely one of the highlights of my life. And uh, I've been, um, I worked as an engineer for a number of years, but always wanted to be an entrepreneur. And uh, it took me a while to find real estate. I was always interested in looking back. I don't know why I didn't get into it sooner. I wish I had, but I've done a number of things from insurance to uh, raising money for oil and gas. And and um, I even worked in a, or you know, did some network marketing for a while, but uh, I love real estate. I, I found real estate as my, and it became my full-time uh, passion about eight years ago. That's great. Yeah. I think that's a common theme having done, you know, this is uh, episode number 328, all, all these shows and just all the people on my network. It's a common theme that people wish they had started earlier, yeah. you know? So I've had a few people on the show even recently that are in their early twenties that are already like killing it. And you just kind of yeah. wish, like, I think I started, I started about nine years ago. So, uh, I guess in my early thirties and it's like, man, if I could just have like another 10 years, I'd be I know, a right? different level right now, knowing what you know now, yeah. of course, which we never knew then, right? <laughs> yep. Woulda, yeah. shoulda, coulda. Yeah. yeah. So tell us a little bit about, um, uh, I know we talked a little bit about the show and, and you were making the analogy of your athletic background and, um, and kind of how it applies to real estate investing. Do you want to kind of share about some of the persistence and things that, that you think are important in this business? Sure. Um, as you pointed out, I mean, this is a business where you can be very successful and still be rejected 95% of the time or more. Right. Right. And you can still make a great living serving and helping that that small percentage. But you have to be persistent. You have to be willing to um, to keep going when the going's tough. And I think that's really where athletics and business uh, kind of coincide. I look at my athletic history and I'll be candid with you. I was never a particularly great judo player. A lot of kids who make it to the Olympic level, they start when they're small children. And I, I didn't. I didn't really get serious um, until my early 20s. And uh, now I did um, have experience in the sport before that, but it wasn't competitive. And I was not that. There was a lot of people that were a lot better than me. But um, I look back and try to figure out, well, what did I do maybe that other people weren't willing to do? And Really, the, what it came down to is, uh, I believe, is just persistence. And uh, I, I think of this one time, I was just starting to, to get better, and I made the national team for the first time, and I went to Europe for a training camp. And um, I was just getting beat badly. <laughs> and I, I, the uh, head coach of the judo team is named Steve, and I said, Steve, what am I doing wrong? He says, Marty, you suck. Uh, <laughs> you, 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 you need to go back and learn the basics. And that was really hard to hear. And I think a lot of people may have said, you know, 
who does he think he is? I made the national team. I don't suck, you know, and just keep doing what you're doing. And instead, I packed my bags. I quit everything I was doing. I moved across the country so I could train with Steve. And two years later, I made my first Olympic team. That was the best thing I ever did is I had to humble myself, hear that criticism, um, and basically uh, relearn a lot of the basics, as he said. And it made all the difference. And I think we have to have that same teachable mentality in business, especially in real estate. It's changing all the time. You have to be willing to sit back and realize, you know what? I might be doing this wrong. I have to look at how I can better serve my marketplace because if you're not getting the results, you're not serving your marketplace. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, this, I've I've taught this uh, for years. Like I think we as real estate investors have a tendency to pick up bad habits because you're always trying to get creative or what can I do differently? And then you kind of get away from the fundamentals, right? And so Mm -hmm. I've kind of always advised people um, like, hey, just set a time in your calendar, like once a quarter, to just go sit down somewhere and just analyze how far you've strayed from the fundamentals of your business, because it'll probably surprise you if you sit down and you think about it. Like, are you still doing this? Are you still doing that? And there's just like little things. You're like, oh, why did we stop doing that? I don't know why we stopped doing that. Or, hmm. you know, why are we doing this? And so I think it's right. a, it's an easy business to pick up bad habits in. It, it definitely is. I think that's yeah. true in life in general. It's easy to kind of get set in your ways and and just kind of, you kind of get blind to your own weaknesses or where yeah. you may have. Uh, straight from the path. Yeah. Well, let's talk a little bit about uh, this same topic because, you know, this has kind of come up uh, a lot in terms, I don't want to talk about politics here because this, this uh, show could take a turn for the worse, but, <laughs> um, but just the idea that everybody gets a trophy, you know, and, and oh. when, I know when you were growing up, we're not, again, we're going to, let's try to stay away from politics a little bit, but when you were growing up and when I was growing up, like we lost like at the earliest levels of any sports that I was in, there was a winner and there there was a loser. And so I have a son that's nine now and you know, the, he competes in karate, he does some other things, but everybody yeah. gets a medal. Everybody gets a ribbon. Right. You know, there's like three bronze winners. It's like, what? Like just <laughs> weird stuff. And I, I, I understand the, why they want to make kids feel good, but they're also, people also have kind of become coddled to think that, I can win. And if I don't, then I just flat out quit instead of persistence. So where do you see kind of this country going? What advice can you give to people right now that, that might help, help them, uh, give them some fortitude to stick with whatever they're trying to do? Wow. Uh, well, that's That's a loaded question. I'm going deep today. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, well, I, I think you, you hit it on the head. We have a, we have a whole generation of people that haven't grown up period. You know, when you have universities, having safe rooms with teddy bears and Play-Doh, seriously. I mean, I was listening to the radio the other day and at some big uh, university, I forget which one, uh, law students had this safe room with Play-Doh and and teddy bears and bean bags. I was just like, are are you serious? So, but I think it goes back to what you're describing. These are kids that grew up where everybody, as you said, got a trophy, everybody's made to feel good and nobody learned to realize, you know what, your self-worth isn't attached to whether you get a trophy or not, that's whether you win or lost. Right. And, um, but there's value to that. But if you take, if you give everybody a trophy, you ought to, you also take away the value of winning. And so you take away the value of working hard and persistence, exactly what we're talking about. Yeah. And so, um, it's not that somebody is less of a person if they don't win, but if they want to win, it, it can light a fire and, and stir that passion yeah. and, um, to do what it takes to win. Uh, but if there's no acknowledgement for winning and there's no acknowledgement for losing, I think you really do yourself and, and our society as a whole a disservice because there's different people that are going to shine in different areas. Not yep. everybody's going to you know, win an Olympic medal. We don't need that as a society. But some people are going to step up and be awesome teachers. Other people are going to step up and be incredible leaders in their communities. Other people are going to step up in other ways. But one of our fundamental needs, I believe, as humans – is acknowledgement and recognition for what we do when we do go above and beyond. Right. And that's the big problem, in my opinion, with the everybody gets a trophy mentality is you, you, they're trying to level this playing field, which sounds great. But the problem is, is people want to have a mountaintop. If you take away the valleys, you're also taking away the mountaintop. And Absolutely. who wants to live on the flat their whole life? I want mountaintops. I'm willing to go through the valley if I can get to a mountaintop. And I just, uh, I believe that we have to be People have to be real with themselves. They have to be willing to be real with each other. Yeah. And um, so I don't know if that answers your question. Yeah, that's great. I man. Of, I, truthfully, I, I think it, unless you, you know, if you feel like, well, I didn't do that. They said I didn't do that bad. 
then versus like you said, the guy said, you suck. Like he just told flat out told you like you suck. And that forced you. It's like, you know, it's, that's how evolution works, right? Yeah. You, you could quit or you could use that as fire in your belly to take it to the next level that's and right. say, I don't want to be a quitter instead of saying, well, you kind of lost. It's like, no, you, you <laughs> lost. Like you either won or you lost. And so right. it, it forces you to, um, it's like when they do like, I don't care, I think a good analogy right now, but you know, sometimes they do like, they basically just burn fields because it makes the grass grow back that much stronger. It's the same thing, like destruction and loss and stuff like that forces you to either get out of the game completely or have to step it up to be successful. That's right. Yeah. And, and I think on top of that, especially in the real estate space, the, the kind of gurus and the late night TV uh, folks and stuff that have taught that real estate investing is kind of easy. Like they, you know, as you and I both know on those shows, uh, flip this house and all those shows, they never talk about even finding the deal. It's just kind of a given, Oh, we found a deal. And then this is what we did with it. But the hardest right. part of this business is finding the deal, right? That's right. <laughs> yep. And so I think a lot of people jump in and they're just assuming, well, yeah, there's deals everywhere. I just go find one. And it's like, okay, well, it's not quite that easy. Right. Um, and so therefore people give up faster, right? Cause they were led to believe it was easy and they probably couldn't fail, but um, it's real, it's real easy to get wiped out in this business, as you know. It's time for a quick announcement. We'll be back to the show in less than 30 seconds. PassiveRental.com is your source for turnkey, done-for-you rental properties. If you'd like to be an investor and not a landlord, please visit PassiveRental.com to learn how to purchase cash-flowing, professionally managed rental properties in the hottest rental markets across the country. We can also help connect you with financing for your next property. Invest the easy way today and get started by visiting PassiveRental.com. Um, it's, it's real easy to get wiped out in this business, as you know. It is. And it, it's kind of all part of that, it, you know, that same mentality you were talking about earlier. People are already set up to think that things are easy and that everybody wins and et cetera, et cetera. Well, that's not a great stepping stone to get into this business because in this business, not everybody wins. You've got to work hard. And as you pointed out, you have to develop a skill set uh, yeah. to find those deals. And that in my I mean, that's kind of one of the oldest adages in real estate, right? You make your money when you buy. Yeah. If you pay too much for a property, I don't care how smart you are or how nice you fix it up, it's going to be hard to make a profit. Yeah. Uh, you've got to buy it right. And finding that deal is a very important part of this business. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and that's where that 595 or whatever percentage you want to apply um, you know, fits in is you know, you're going to look at a lot of houses. I think even in, I'm not necessarily a, a big follower of, of Rich Dad, Poor Dad, but I, I love that book. And uh, I think he talked about going out and looking at a hundred houses before he made offers. And I may have gotten that slightly wrong, but I'm pretty sure about the hundred houses. And I think that's consistent with our business. You've got to go out and look at a hundred houses to get a feel for what you're doing. Yeah. Especially if you're new, you, you might need to make a hundred offers to get one deal. I mean, yeah. And exactly. uh, I think some people that like, well, I made like five offers and they're just like waiting to see what happens. And it's like, you can't wait. You've always got to be plugging forward. You just yeah. keep going. Right. Yeah. Well, let's talk a little bit about, um, um, I know there's something that you espouse in, in your company is just professionalism and yeah. it's something that I've always done. I think that that's back to the, we're kind of taking the next step from, uh, persistence is don't set yourself up for failure by just walking into a house with flip flops on and not having any recognizable kind of brand and things like that. But let's talk about professionalism and, and what your thoughts are there. Yeah, it might take a new investor a while to build a brand. It did. It took me one as well. And I don't want somebody to think you've got to sit around for you know extended period of time, visualize your brand, create a cool logo. All that stuff will come. But right. what you can do from day one when you're out there hustling and working hard and finding deals, make the effort. A, show up on time. B, treat people with respect. I mean, these are fundamentals. Yeah. Uh, don't denigrate the the property. It doesn't matter if it needs a lot of work. Treat them with respect. You can acknowledge that it needs a lot of work without. But I've literally seen people come into a property and I, you know, just say, oh, man, this place is just a wreck I, or, you know, use other stronger yeah. language. How do you live like this? <laughs> yeah. Which I you're mean, thinking it, it, but you don't have to say it. <laughs> exactly. And um, even when people know this and they generally do, they don't need it thrown in their face. Show yeah. them the respect and courtesy uh, that every human being deserves. And what I've learned in business is that 90, I mean, I believe it sets you apart from 95 percent of your competition right then and there. Just be professional, be respectful, and be on time. Uh, just those three things. I'm really, I hang my hat. I, I feel it's so important. And um, for my sales guys, they have to 
you know, they've got to be professional parents. They've got to wear appropriate clothes. They've got to be on time. If they don't, I'm going to let them go. It's a big deal in my company yeah. because somebody's time is important. And if you schedule an appointment for noon and you're there at 1230 and you're texting them, oh, traffic's bad. It doesn't matter. They don't. Traffic is not their problem. You being on time shows that you respect them. And if you can't honor a commitment to be on an appointment, how are you going to honor a commitment to buy their house and solve their problem and take away their uncertainty and the fear that they're facing in this situation? Yeah. Yeah, I know the, the last contract that, that we got even, um, the buyer, so I have an acquisitions guy that works for me. He's bought hundreds of house for, for a long time. He he stayed there. He spent a lot of time with the person, kind of explained the situation. And the guy told him before he left, no matter what my other offers are, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sell my house to you. Um, he just wanted, he had other investors looking at it, which we don't often win competitive situations, to be honest, because right. somebody outbids us or whatever. Um, right. And literally, he sold us the house, and he he said, "Well, I had some higher offers. Your offer was the lowest, but I I trusted you the most." Yeah, that's and exactly. then money. A lot of people. I think a lot of people are kind of surprised when they hear this. If you're not an investor now, is that money is often not the motivation or the lever that people that cause people to sell us house. It's it's kind of like avoidance of pain, where I want to make this easy. I don't want to go through this right. again. I want to work with somebody I trust. And it's not so much like I need every dime I could get. Sometimes it is, but uh, it's not always the case. Right. Generally, the person who wants every dime is going to go a different route anyway. Yeah. Uh, just like you said, people are looking for confidence. They're looking for peace of mind. They're looking for somebody they can trust. That, I mean, that's the name of my brand, the trusted home buyer. They're looking for somebody that they can trust that's going to take this problem away. Um, and that's something that we train internally on. And it's re it's human nature. People always feel like, well, they out. We lost that contract because somebody offered more. Well, maybe, or maybe we didn't do a good enough job building rapport, building trust, because it happens to us all the time, too, where people will tell us, just like your story, yeah. well, we trusted you more. Um, just because if somebody is unprofessional or, or uh, creates other reasons for the seller to feel concerned and throws out a higher number, it doesn't mean that you have to compete with that number. Um, I mean, think of you know any buying experience that we engage in all the time. Um, you know, I don't go, uh, if I'm going to buy a car, for example, I'm not just going to buy the cheapest car. I'm going to weigh other options. Right. How long is this going to last? You know, reliability, safety, all these other things are factors. Yep. Same thing in our business. And we are those other factors. We, you know, when people are evaluating us, how reliable is this transaction? You know, am I, do I feel good that this is going to go through? Uh, those are, that's a big part of this equation. And if you can address that, um, if you look desperate to compete on price, people will actually lose confidence in you. If you can look somebody in the eye with confidence and say, you know, I may not be the highest offer, but I understand this business. And I know that if we, if you uh, work with us, you're pro we're going to solve your problem. It's going to be done the way we say it's going to be yeah. done. Yeah. Yeah. And the other thing that I, that I believe, and I've seen it many, many times in our own business is that if you treat somebody right, if you're professional, if they trust you more and you, when you did have a lower offer, then sometimes you'll get another swing at the ball. It doesn't mean that you're going to get it, but they'll say, look, I, I got a higher offer. I would really rather sell it to you because they trust mm -hmm. us more because we built that relationship. Right. And yeah. it's like, is there any way that you can, I've even had people say, cause sometimes it's been like a little bit out of reach or I don't really want to go that high. And we've said, well, do we have to, do we have to beat their offer? And they say, well, can you just get closer? Like they're willing to give some because they trust, yeah. they trust you more. Yeah. I and mean, that says a lot about professionalism and the importance of it. Absolutely. You're yeah. And that's how you create value. And that's yeah. how you get deals, um, opportunities to, to make, to make a profit yeah. is to uh, buy, to, you know, create that margin. You add value to your seller, not necessarily through extra dollars, but through extra value of reliability and trustworthiness. And that's the margin that allows you to go out then and make profit. Yeah. Which Martin, you should. Yeah. Yeah. Martin, any, any quick tips you can give on uh, some basic things you can do for professionalism to just, you know, of course you talked about being on time and, and things like that, but just in appearance or kind of business practice, business cards, any kind of like low hanging fruit that's like, Hey, this is the easy stuff. Just make sure you do these things. Wow. That's a good question. Um, I kind of hit on the, on the biggies just cause I see it all the time where, yeah. you know, and we've already talked about those, but, um, but certainly, I think uh, having, you know, spend 50 bucks and have a, a nice looking business card instead of the Vista print ones for free. I think that's kind of a no brainer. The you know, show Vista print on the back. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's, you know, show that you've been in business for a while, that you have some reliability. A lot of people might disagree with me on this one, but I'm a fan of the Better Business Bureau. I think a lot of people in our biz in our space that might sell us a house uh, still check that. And so 
And it's a great environment to build up uh, testimonials. I think that's a really another key is if you're doing a good job, follow up in a professional way and get that testimonial. Yeah. And you can um, it can go a long way because this day and age, people are checking you out. At least a lot of them are. And if you have some validation for how you've helped others, it's going to help you build that brand that you're working toward. Yeah. Yeah. And another one I think is to have a professional looking website, even if you're not yeah. doing paid advertising to your site, because I think a lot of people, if you're sending direct mail or even a business card, if they haven't been to your site, a lot of times they're going to go research you, right? Right. Even yeah. if uh, for years I, I didn't pursue uh, PPC or SEO, maybe the way we ought to have, but we had, uh, but I, that professional website is pointing out, it's just, it's another validation uh, that you are who you say you are, that you have a legitimate business. You're not just some guy who, watched a late night program last week and thought, Hey, I'm going to give this a try. Right. And, um, by the way, we love those guys cause we sell against them all the time yeah. and it, and, and they make it easy for us. But this is a way that that guy can go out and, and start creating his own, uh, professional, uh, presence and you can do it quickly. I mean, this day and age, you can have a great looking website. There's great services out there that do that. Um, and, uh, in, in no time. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, Martin, I've got kind of a question of the week that I want to ask you that uh, fit right into some of the stuff we've been talking about. Sure. And that I, is, I want to know, uh, you didn't really talk a, lot, a whole lot about your um, your professional, uh, your athletic background, which is uh, is pretty expansive, which is really interesting. But talk about, uh, here's the question, is, what lessons have you applied to your business from being an Olympic athlete, uh, specifically in, in judo? What are some of the lessons that you learned as a, as a Olympic level judo athlete that you could apply towards your business or you have applied towards your business. Okay, sure. Do you take uh, anybody well, down? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the the easiest, the, the, the most obvious uh, component of that answer is, you know, uh, judo and like a lot of sports, you've got to, uh, if you're always battling somebody else's strength, you're going to, you're going to struggle. Mm -hmm. And so judo, like a lot of martial arts is you take somebody else's force and you quote unquote, use it against them. Um, and in our business, I don't think we want to use somebody else's strength against them per se. But the point is, um, if you focus on what you're good at and you try to help where somebody else might be weak, I think you're going to have a much greater success instead of battling somebody on their strength. If somebody wants to battle you on price, I don't think you're going to succeed in that battle. Instead, find out where they, their real need, their soft spot might be and help them there. So that would be kind of the, the, I think the big takeaway is, is you can't, you can't be the best at everything, right? Be good at what you're good at. And, um, and know where you can win and know where you're not going to win. And that's where you put your time and energy and effort. Um, I'm not, I mean, there's in judo, there's certain, you know, techniques, throws, takedowns that I was better at and some that I wasn't. I'm not going to go out in the Olympics and go try out the new stuff that I'm not good at, you know, in, in that environment. You're going to, but you have to always, by the same token, be practicing um, and exploring where am I weak, where am I strong, so that when it's time to play, when it's game time, you can perform. Yeah, and um, awesome. and I think that's another big mistake people make is they practice in the real in the real world, and and, and there is always going to be an element of that. But there's a lot that you can do to be prepared, so that when you are meeting with that seller, um, you have a much better opportunity to uh, close that deal yeah. than if you just are practicing with that person. Yeah. So preparation is, is key. I think that's in, um, and that's not judo specific. That's, uh, but I guarantee, you know, I, I'm no Michael Phelps, but Michael Phelps was prepared, right? He didn't, yeah, absolutely. Uh, he knows, he knows exactly how many strokes to and from the wall. He knows everything. He's not figuring it out as, as he goes. Yeah. And, absolutely. um, and those are things that we can apply in our business. We can know where, um, what our client needs. We can ask good questions beforehand and come into that appointment prepared saying, okay, I understand that this is, you know, what you're looking for. Here's how I can help you. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. That's awesome. So, um, Hey, I wanted to kind of follow back up. We talked about persistence and never giving up and, and I wanted to kind of tie that into what you just said about <clears throat> your strengths and your weaknesses. So I've been listening to a few podcasts, reading some things lately where, you know, they, they kind of basically are talking about that we're generally taught when we're growing up to focus on 
your weaknesses, right? Like improve your weaknesses. And then the alternative to that is, Hey, it's okay. If you're not good at that, focus on what you are good at, focus on your strengths. And as a business owner and as a real estate investor, you know, kind of what are your thoughts on how to focus on what you're good at? And then with your team and, 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 and other people that you surround yourself with, allow them to fill the gaps with your weaknesses. Well, uh, that's a great question. And I, um, that's one of my weaknesses, to be honest with you, is um, is being able to, is, is offsetting my strengths with other pe- and weaknesses with other people that are really complementary fits. I, I yeah, um, I think that's a Me real. Me too. Me too. <laughs> it's it's a struggle in business to do that. Yeah. Um, I, I think on a on a personal and business level, every uh, you know John Maxwell. I'm sure you're familiar with him. He talks about well, if you assess your skills, uh, and let's say you have you're an eight in one category and a two in another. Says you're much. He says you're much better off bringing your eight to a ten rather than your two to a four. Sure. But by that same token, I believe it's important to know where you are a two as an individual and as a business, so that when you're out hiring, you know where you what gaps you need to fill. Right. Um, and uh, so I, I think honest self assessment. Again, it's all, all these themes are connected. It goes back to that that <laughs> initial. If you're not willing to assess yourself and be honest with yourself about your weaknesses then you're going to have a very difficult time um, in finding somebody that can compliment you in that way. Yeah. And I think it's tough too. a lot, you know, a lot of investors are, are um, solopreneurs, right? They're individuals that are doing a lot of things. And so I think it's, it's not like everybody has a robust team of like, you know, I have a 10 person team that I can fill out because you may not be able to afford that, especially early on. But I do think, like you said, it's real important to know what your weaknesses are. Because uh, especially if it's around acquisitions, like if you're just not a good people person, you're really uncomfortable meeting with somebody that you don't know and trying to help them solve a problem, then you're probably setting yourself up for failure. It doesn't mean you shouldn't be a real estate investor. It just means that, I mean, that's such a critical role to have a good person in that, you know, uh, you could be hurting yourself if you can't step up your game there or find somebody else that can play that role for you. Yeah, you know, <clears throat> on that, that I would say that's the hardest role to outsource because everybody it is, yeah. it's, it's the most valuable and it's where the rubber meets the road in this business. Can you go out yeah. and get a contract? And, um, you know, it, uh, you always want to feel like you can do things better and, than anybody else and as a solopreneur. And that's, I think, one of the hardest lessons to learn is, you know what, there really is somebody that can do it better than you. And one of the things I've been really blessed with is my acquisitions guy here in Phoenix, he's better at it than I am. Um, and I think a large part of that is, is I, I love helping people and I'm passionate and people see that, but I tend to be more on the serious side and uh, Joel, um, he's just much better at just kind of relax and letting loose, you know, more of a sense of humor, getting people to laugh, getting people to laugh is not really one of my strengths, but it's his. (laughs) And you know what, tell you what, if you get people to laugh, uh, boy, that can open up a lot of opportunity. And so his numbers, his uh, he does great. And I think that's a big part of it is not only is he trustworthy, but he's um, it's easier. It's easier to like somebody that makes you laugh. And, uh, you know, all things being equal, people would rather do business with people they like. Yeah. Yeah. In, in terms of uh, and that, that that can become uh, I know we want to talk a little bit about brand, which we talked a little bit about, but that can become part of your brand as well of just kind of how you represent yourself when you're meeting with sellers. Right. Of just. Uh, being trustworthy, being easy to talk to, all those things, right? Absolutely. And that's one of the things that I've benefited or, you know, my company has really benefited from a really defining what it means to be the trusted home buyer. That's our brand. And because there's a lot of times you want, you work hard to get a deal. You want to do whatever it takes to get a deal. And, and sometimes things can get a little fuzzy or gray. And it's really helped us to say, to know this is who we want to be. And it helps bring clarity to difficult situations of how are we going to handle this? And to be able to go back to kind of those core values or your mission or whatever you want to call it, say, this is who we are and this is who we want to be. And then it can often it'll 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 help you put some focus on that challenge and say, you know what? I think this is how we need to address this based on um, based on our values. Yeah. And, you know, if you don't. And you, and once you have those values, you can share those with your clients as well. And it can be part of your presentation and it can help them. It can be another way for them to help feel connected to you. Yeah. Yeah. I, w- any kind of advice you could give to, to newer investors that might be listening or those that they may not be new, but this is kind of like, 
uh, hitting home that uh, I don't really know what, I mean, in their mind, they know I'm a good person. I always try to do the right thing. I do these things, but they don't really have kind of a stated, um, this is who we are. And then kind of basically make sure that the clients, the sellers that they're meeting with actually understand this is who you're dealing with here and, and why you should work with us. Any kind of tips or advice there? Well, I can only, I don't know that I'm a, a branding expert and can say, this is the process. I feel like I've done it well. I've, I've built a couple of brands um, that I'm proud of. And my personal process takes quite a bit of time. It's an investment. I mean, it, once you have like Flip Nerd, I don't know how long that took you, but the trusted home buyer took me, uh, I think I probably worked on it for about six months. I have all sorts of ideas. I used a mind map. I used notepads. I was always scratching down things like, oh, well, what about this? What about that? And and it's just kind of a, a process of I'd, every time something struck a chord with me, this is who I want to be or this is what I like, I'd write it down. And over time, I started to realize the theme I started to hear back from people over and over is, Martin, when people talk, they trust you. And it just helped me coalesce that into a brand. Yeah. So that would be the first thing is I would I, you have to invest time. You're, it's not just going to pop out of thin air, especially in this day and age where everybody has a is trying to have a brand. Right. So um, the other thing I would encourage uh, somebody looking to build a brand is avoid the word solutions. Everybody has solutions in their name. Everybody's providing solutions for something. It's not terribly creative. It's long. And I don't think it's going to help differentiate you very much. I would encourage people to really spend time on, on what your values are, what's important to you, who you want to be, and come up with a brand that speaks to that, um, that may not use the word solutions. Yeah. That's just my two cents worth. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Martin, Hey, this is great information. Anything that we, that we didn't cover that you, that you want to talk about here as we kind of wrap things up? Hmm. That's a good question. Um, you know, I, I, I guess just one more comment on the brand. I, I think it's to, for me, I think it's true for most people, but it's definitely true for me that at the end of the day, I want to feel good about what I do. Yeah. And you want to lay your head down on your pillow at night and feel um, and have that peace. And I believe that comes from being congruent in your business with who you are and who you, what your values are. Yeah. If you believe you answer to a higher power, then you know those values need to be honored in your business. And um so I think that's a question you need to be asking yourself uh, is how can I honor my values in my business? How can I, um, and being in making an, a concerted effort to do that will bring you extra peace and satisfaction yeah. because on the surface, you know, what do we do? Well, we buy properties for less than they're worth and we flip them and make, make the margin, right? Well, great. I mean, it, uh, but it's not all about money. At some point there has to be more to it or you're going to um or the passion's not going to be there right and so i i think that's been very important for me is just to be maybe not necessarily even just who i am but who i want to be hmm. yeah that's great well martin if folks want to learn more about you um or, or about your companies where should they go well uh our uh, brand for buying houses is the trusted A lot of people forget the the in front. So the trusted And of course, if you've got a property or rental property or uh, that you want to get rid of, definitely give us a call. Um, and, you're, and you're in Phoenix so, and Grand Rapids, Michigan. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah. Thanks for pointing that out. Those yeah. are the two markets we're in right now and we'd love to expand, but those are the two uh, for now. And, uh, uh, and then if you're interested in buying in, uh, a good deal in those markets, we also uh, flip uh, some of our properties as is to other investors just because we don't have the capacity to handle all of them. And that uh, website is topazwholesaleproperty.com. And property awesome. is singular. Awesome, awesome. We'll add links uh, for both of these down below the uh, the uh, show notes here for those of you that are going 80 miles an hour down the freeway right now. We don't want you to try to write that down. So, uh, Martin, really, really appreciate you spending some time with us today. Oh, you're very welcome. It's great to be here. I, I love Flip Nerd. I love what you're doing, and it's a it's a real honor to be part of your uh, part of your podcast. Well, thanks, man. I, I really appreciate you being here. So, uh, and in fact, I'm going to see you in just a few days at our mastermind. So, I look forward to seeing you there. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it as well. Yeah, yeah. Awesome, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Uh, this this again was episode number 328, and we've got a lot of great shows out there. We're going to keep them coming at you. So, uh, thanks for spending time with us today. Hope you have a great week. Take care, everybody. Thanks for joining us for this episode of the Flipner.com Investing Show. 
If you're not yet an elite member of FlipNerd, you're missing out. We have tons of great training, including a new detailed masterclass published each month and live training webinars with experts twice a month. Plus, you'll get access to all of our archives where we already have a growing library of masterclasses and other training videos. Elite members also get membership in our incredible online mastermind group, where many of the top real estate investors from across the country, including many of the hundreds of guests I've had on the show in the past, are already members. Whether you're brand new, looking to get started, or a veteran, you simply must join today. I promise you won't be disappointed. To learn more or join today, please visit flipnerd.com slash lab. That's flipnerd.com slash lab. See you on the next show.